Hopefully it was for the people at home and the people in this lovely crowd here in Lucca, Italy. Uh, but we had the, the new players, the new blood stepping into the plane for QPL season two. And yeah. it's, it's going to be automatically different. And remember, make no mistake, this may be the grand finals of stage one. But there is going to be a stage two coming up. So uh, both these players, they're not thinking about anything except the first map that's going to be in their sights right now. But there's plenty more Quake where that came from. Again, it's all about the belt as everyone's making sure everything's set appropriately. They're ready to go. Whenever we can, we'll get into the first map, but who can etch their name into the belt? Regardless of the winner, it's going to be a brand new name. Unfortunately for Kilson, not going to be a repeat champion, not at this event at least. Damn close, though. Very, very close. But again, that last semi just... Cooler showing his dominance, showing everybody why he's the king. Well, Cooler has a lot to prove after the uh, grand finals performance at QuakeCon, which definitely eluded him. But now we're loading in. It's going to be grand finals of stage one here. QPL starting things off on Awoken Cooler. We're going to be spectating first. Able to establish a really nice amount of early stack. The Strog and Pika, that crouch slide giving Strog so much movement. But I think the elevation potential of uh, the Pika as well really creates those strange exchanges where you, know, you can kind of cover corners a little bit better. If the you know, player's weak, he can try and bag some free damage without putting himself in harm's way. We have seen a significant amount of stroke this weekend. Cooler dropping out of that 50 armor, a little bit of LG, good rocket there to make sure that Razy doesn't aggress from that angle. And yeah, very interesting to see how Cooler's going to utilize uh, this Pika here. Again, using uh, the Strog, the crouch slide is available. We see him sliding around into the LG room. Playing very, very slow off the start here. This is always the scary beginning of a map like this. You're really trying to deny as much info as possible while at the same time, you're both aware of what's going to appear. Ghost Crazy walk going the yeah, Ghost Walk. And that's a Ghost Walk that's playing no games. That's a, I'm not even going to see if I'm able to tank this and take damage and then use it last minute. It's I'm going to use it to disengage, keep a massive stack, and then take Mega. We are going to see a rail. The second one's going to miss, unfortunately. It would have been very important for AZ to land that second one and really lay that pressure on thick against Cooler, who's able to temporarily get out of there. Maintaining this presence now of 0-0, zero, zero, Razy. Being very patient indeed and cooler, just looking for a moment to potentially catch Razy off guard. He's very mindful of how much noise he's going to make. Sliding around through banana, LGs are out. The rocket from Razy, good. He needs to hit one more, and he does. And Razy puts himself on the board for the first frag of the championship set. Great way to start. The fact that Heavy's just about to spawn has, in fact, been taken by Cooler. You know, Razy was trying to maybe hit a little bit of an angle. Ooh, Ooh buddy. Rocket from out of nowhere, almost hitting its mark. And it would have done 100 damage, setting something up for Cooler if it did. But fortunately for Razy, it definitely didn't. And Razy's trying to fortify. Doesn't want to give up this Mega without a fight. The moment you allow Cooler to stack, Razy confident that he can drop the jump pad and take the health. But it looks like Cooler's going to tie things up one to one, thanks to the Vile and the Mega combined. He's on more than full health. Definitely needs to look at a little bit of armor. Able to fix that with the heavy. And Razy was maybe trying to look at an angle, but I mean, he was fresh off the spawn near LG. There really wasn't anything he could do to stop it, besides get a bit of mental timing. Fantastic rocket and LG forcing out the ghost walk yet again. Cooler doing a great job. A little bit of a miss time from Razy on that mega cost. And the frag, and here we go off the T-Con. LG on LG. Cooler gets the best of Razy, and he's up by one. Perfect timing on the mega so far. He was able to run the circuit before. And again, Razy, like, if he wants to fight for the heavy, it's a bit of a weird position for him because he spawned near the heavy, but right before it was about to spawn. So he has to take that time out to disengage and collect the important weapons. Doesn't make a difference because of some tasty LG indeed. Cooler making it three to one. And as long as he's just keeping this rotation going and getting some good spawns on Razy, he can be as, as pressuring as he likes, really. You know, that Mega's about to spawn again. Once more, Razy can't fight for it. And now Razy needs to really sort of take a step back and resort to perhaps trying to get some of that range damage down. You know, take away some of the stack before a fight happens. He's going to have to concede at this stage. Razy trying to get some rockets. Oh, that one hurts a lot. No ghost walk for you either. So the escape is impossible. Cooler just really keeping Razy just on, on a leash at this moment. It really feels like every time Razy's navigating this map, it's kind of just Cooler's happy with him to do that. Inevitably, he's going to catch him off guard. Razy forced to run away, which again is going to waste a lot of time. Razy kind of doing whatever he can to undo some of that damage being dealt by constantly collecting these major pickups. But uh, if you're Razy, you know, he, he's being kept away from the major items that prevent him from making a comeback too. 
like, you know, cool objective, going straight for the rail, making sure Razy, if he's trying to make a comeback here, he needs to whittle that health down in big bursts. The rail is normally a great way to do it. Cool is like, well, no, I'm just going to chase you down this way and try and deny it as much as possible. Here we go. Defensive rockets looking good. And he's going to go potentially a rail shot here. The rockets oh! are good. Ring out. Cooler with a little bit of a smirk on there as the rocket will gently push him off the map. Razy needed that. That's a good frag to have. Misses the rail off the spawn. The cooler's been doing a good job of forcing out the ghost walk. Razy holding onto it for now needs to be careful. If he wants to push in, he does have it as a panic button. But so far, cooler has been doing a good job of forcing it out early and then attacking when Razy has it on cooldown. And then from behind, wow. Razy caught off guard at the top of Banana there. And then, then look at this aggression right here. Again with the LG. There it is, forcing it out again. Cooler's going to move back right on top of the Mega. He is going to get a rail on his way out, but he's completely fine with that. He's forced out the Ghost Walk. Razy doesn't have that much stack. The Rocket's great, but the LG from Cooler's not bad either. As the fight over Heavy breaks out, can he get the frag? He does right before the Heavy pickup. Razy looking stronger now. And just fortification there from Razy. It was likely Cooler was going to use the momentum it built up from the crouch side to run in there and try and fight his way into Heavy. But once more, it's a bit of a strange exchange here up near Mega because Cooler only really has an LG. He's lacking weaponry. That missed rail. How heavy can he punish it? Can Razy go for the shot? He does manage to get a little bit of damage, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough. Cooler on the verge of taking back control at this stage. The light armor is going to make him nice and tanky. Razy without armor. He's going in for heavy, but at this point, he's taking so much damage. The Ghost Walk. What is the read? Can Cooler predict how Razy's going to evade here? He does get sight of him. So he's going to go down near LG. In and out, but how's the fight going to go? LG looking pretty even so far. You have to factor in that Razy's going to get some all-important health down near Banana, thanks to the two vials that exist. Stopwatch suggesting that he's right on the pickup as it spawns. That Mega is going to go into the hands of Cooler very easily. And now he's in a perfect position to really try and deny this heavy. The moment he gains this control, it goes straight back to Razy being a bit concerned because there's a few light armors around. Kind of sparingly, though. If he can do damage to Razy here, the light champion dilemma of just being caught without armor, it's miserable. Oh. And the rockets are phenomenal. Cooler tags another one. Six to three here. Six to three indeed. Six minutes in, here comes the LG. Razy really wants rockets, but at what cost? Another frag goes to Cooler, and you can tell the king wants his crown. Four frags up. Cooler looking so strong, and I don't think we've seen a single peeker deploy. I don't think Cooler necessarily even cares about that. Mostly utilizing the crouch slide from Strog all over the map. Very smooth movement here, but his positioning catching Razy off guard, forcing out the Ghost Walk. That's all adding up. Cooler playing so well right now. Again, Razy looking the wrong way. The shotgun's out. The Ghost Walk is also forced out. There's the LG coming back out of Ghost Walk, and Razy makes him pay as Cooler lingering a bit too long there. That was a perfect choice to swap for the Super Shotgun, too. You know, Cooler tried to cover his base a little bit by going for that predictive rocket just in case Razy was going for a Telefrag. But maybe that was too bold of a prediction that Razy was going to try something as risky as that rather than just put himself out of position, get the surprise damage, and by the time Cooler's turned around, the sufficient damage to set up an SSG kill was already done and set up perfectly. Cooler's in the lead now, but that frag from Razy, really important, the aggressive phase shift. Here we go. Oh, go for the telefrag, wow. but it doesn't matter. He's still gonna get a beautiful rocket. And just like that, he's brought himself straight back into it. Cooler with an unfavorable spawn location. If you factor in that Razy was heading straight for him, another rail should be a killing blow. Switch to shotgun is perfect down in the sewer area. Seven to six, Razy heating up. It's slowly starting to slip away from Cooler. Certainly he can't allow this here as he had such a commanding lead, a 742 in the duel. The stack on Razy's huge. He's gonna take the jump pad, pop the ghost walk. He has position for a free rail. There it is, a little bit of LG return from Cooler. But Razy's still looking so strong with this stack as he makes his way over to the heavy. I feel like both of these players have had a very similar style once they're in control. It is a game of just making sure you've got all the weaponry and then trying to sort of catch that spawn as early as physically possible and deny what you can. That was such a good escape from Cooler there. Had no option. Rocket jump out. A missed shotgun from Razy. Cooler stays alive, keeps his frag lead, and almost takes his head off. Razy does with that rail. Goes through the telly. Great flick. Getting more damage. Cooler again hurting. Needs armor. Razy denying this mega and trying to find Cooler. A minute 30 left, still down by one. Cooler trying to slow things down, but he still needs a stack. He needs to find armor. There's 150 shard taken. That's going to help. But I mean, rest assured, you know, Cooler is in the lead thanks to a one frag difference, but he's the one that was currently have to play the runaway. However, the fact that he was able to survive all coming off the back of that beautiful rocket jump uh, out of a dire situation. 
They can still be nice and defensive and avoid as many of these rails as possible. Easier said than done when you're against someone of the stature of Razy, but unfortunately knocking himself down into a very risky position at risk of giving this frag up. Tries to rocket jump out of there, but the moment he jumped down the jump pad, I, I fear his fate was sealed. That and was now it. it's going to be an even split. Catches him rocket jumping towards light armor. Is able to do a little bit Razy with a very wonderful stack indeed. By the time the next fight happens, he might actually have Ghost Walk unless he triggers it now. The defensive rocket's coming through. Force down and some damage that he what can't return. Rail. Beautiful rail from Razy. And we're about to go into what might be sudden death if he can't finish it now. But finishing it might be his specialty. Going in for the rail. Cooler. Very weak. And this could be all she wrote. The and peaker, finally, the peaker play comes out. Oh my god. Cooler saving it until the last 30 seconds gets the frag 8 to 7. Wow. LG now. Razy trying to fight back. Rockets landing. But no. a Oh my goodness. A mutual frag that's still going to keep Cooler in the lead with 15 seconds left. I can't believe it. Razy gets a great spawn because he's right near all the weapons that were dropped. He doesn't have to waste time going in for the rocket launcher. If he finds him now, he can do it. But I feel that Pika, the MVP of Grand Final so far, is going to put Cooler one map up. He didn't use Pika at any moment. I almost feel like for a split second, Razy might have even forgot about the possibility because for 10 minutes, there was no Pika to be had until it truly mattered. That was and what a perfect time. Such a monstrous play there. Absolutely incredible. Razy almost pulls this one back. It looked like it was out of reach. And then he does all that work and Cooler's like, by the way, here's my Pika, gets the frag, takes the map, and what a start to this series for the championship belt. I mean, there's always a possibility that you go so long without using a certain thing that in the absolute heat of the moment, it's not completely forgotten about, but it's not an immediate thing on your mind. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on Cooler's stack actually during that replay because I, clearly Razy went in for the fight because he was really confident he could take it and, and no one would blame him for that. But I really want to know just how close he was to fragging Cooler when that Pika took place. I mean, that was the most absolute pivotal moment of this entire duel uh, because the back and forth was insane. They had very similar styles, right? It was establish a huge stack, keep perfect rotation of the items, and then when essentially one of the, the frags would go in the favor of the one that has control, they're really listening out for where the respawn is and, and just going in, you know, like an absolute panther, just absolutely pouncing on top of it. But yeah, this is kind of dawning the moment where we almost saw it all go wrong for Cooler. Tries to rocket jump out there and can't get it. Had him dead to rights. Look at this. So weak. Unbelievable, that play. As you saw before that, he had him dead to rights earlier, and he was like, okay, business as usual. You're trapped yourself. And then the peeker pop, and wow. I don't think anybody saw that coming. And just the right amount of the map blocked off his hitbox, too. You know, there wasn't even a scope that Razy could kind of just get a little tiny bit of extra LG there because like only just was none of Strog sticking out of that terrain. Uh, but wow. you can see the level of control, you know, 10 for 10. A pretty sort of standard one, I suppose, because there were moments where Razy had that exact momentum just flipped on its head. Uh, they very much were doing the same thing to each other. But I mean, you got to come in clutch in grand finals and cooler. Just, oh my God, the one form he's on this weekend. He won by a peaker. And sometimes that's all it takes. Map number two is going to be corrupted keep. Can he keep the momentum going? Razy can't be happy about that one, but it is called Razy's Keep. We've seen him dominate previously on this map. This is going to be an uphill battle for Cooler, but we're going to get into it. Map number two of the championship game. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm ready. Catch up. Hold me. I'm scared. When you're the kind of player where a map gets called Razy's Keep in 2017 and Quake Champions started in 20 2017, you know that you made an impact early on. You know, absolutely. back when Corrupted Keep was the new hotness, Razy was just absolutely mopping people on this map. He had a real hand on it before everyone else did. Obviously, a different beast entirely since then. The immediate use of the dual wield cooler, trying to establish something. Razy keeping a bunch of all important armor at this stage. Lots of small pickups to fall back on if he needs to. Only an LG in sight, doesn't matter. Cooler trying to go towards the heavy with uh, not really the stack to do it. It just looks like Razy had the right read to go and press the advantage. Are we going to see another frag? I think the LG should be good in small bursts. He's going to do what must be done at the last second. I was going to say, both players have been phenomenal on Corrupted Keep this weekend. So it's kind of hard to call, really, who I think has the edge here. 
Rezzy throws down the turret, needs a little bit of extra firepower to get out from behind the statue. That is a deadly position. We saw Cooler popping dual wheel just to get out of there earlier. Is he going to get fragged at heavy again? Rezzy's going to take his leave, actually giving up the heavy, opting for the mega instead. Sacks are going to be about even as the turret goes down. Cooler takes care of that. He wants a little bit of rockets, needs to be careful as he goes up the jump pad. Rezzy waiting with the LG. There's a shotgun blast, and he's going to say this isn't worth it, and he's going to back away for the time being. Knowing Razy, he's always looking with his next attack in sight. And right now he's looking for heavy machine gun, but we've seen Cooler in a heavy machine gun today. Man's making magic happen. Razy forced into a little bit less than desirable retreating spot. Cooler's just laying that pressure on. Very mindful of those defensive rockets, though. He knows that if he can just beat him to Mega, he should have an opportunity to take it anyway. Looks like Mega is going to get taken. Razy with absolute defense in his mind. Can he at least try to deny one of these items? He's backing up as much as he can, and just look, Cooler starving him. There's no armor in sight. Razy delaying the inevitable at this stage, but as long as he has a lead, it's okay. Let's oh. try and maximize. Yeah, that Gauntlet was just maximizing damage before he eventually died. He knew what his fate was before he even equipped that pummel. Trying to get what he can there, and Cooler putting himself on the board with one frag. There's a little bit of an LG as Razy diving in with Nail, but the Mega's right there, and Cooler is also waiting with open arms and a little bit of a lightning gun there. Takes over the heavy, ties it at two. Good rocket from Razy. Doesn't go through the telly yet. Razy gets taken aback by that. The turret waiting, and wow. wow! Popping off. What a trap set by Razy. Gets the frag. Still a little weak. He has 225s to work with as he's stuck in the red room for now. Can't really pressure for this mega. He's going to push out with LG. The dual wield is going to push him back. And uh, Cooler having a bit of a weapon struggle there, too. Uh, that's one of the reasons the Titan was able to just go in and, and be the pain in the backside that it was. Cooler picking things up and correcting that, saying, where is the turret? I would like revenge, please. There you are. Screw you, buddy. You pesky little thing. I tied it three, three minutes in now. Cooler playing slow around the upper green. Mega's going to be up in about 10. The split between the items is perfect. 10 seconds, just enough to rotate at your leisure, especially in a map this small. And Cooler just waiting. Trying to find any kind of sound cue to play off of. Razy right at Rockets. We're trying to make his way out from behind this. Wow, just amazing Dead. machine gun into dual LG. So much damage from Cooler. Definitely some good rockets coming out from Razy too. It's just the damage output was way too severe to really contest. He kind of got, I think, the max amount of damage he really could in that exchange situation. And uh, one thing that Cooler's really had a whole bearing on this entire stage one finals is a, a near surgical timing on the Mega and the Mega. So many of these fights happen where he just sort of dips down like on the microsecond the Mega spawns and it gives him what he's looking for, you know, the extra stack. And then he uses that stack to establish a free frag. And then because he just collected Mega, he's really in a shape where he can kind of pursue and get a spawn frag. Crazy oh. is going to fall again. Cooler. The LG has just been near perfect so far. Uh, it's been one of his star weapons. Switch to rockets oh, and what speed. a flick right there. The king asserting dominance. And I really like that play at the lower green. I think Razy thought that he'd be at heavy, but he caught him out with LG. And now this could lead to yet another frag. Cooler looking weak, but the mega is right there to heal him right back up. Razy needs to be careful. He is going to grab the upper green. Cooler waiting on the lower green. Here's the push from Razy. He wants to get something going. LG on nail. Cooler fighting for his life. Switches to rockets and somehow makes it a mutual frag. Looking for the trade, and that's exactly what he's going to get. The question is going to be, what are the spawns? Razy spawning in the rocket and heavy. Kind of puts him in a wonderful position to at least get something established here. Cooler, rest assured, still in the lead here. He's going to be a lot closer to LG, though, which kind of gives him a bit of an edge in this exchange. Depends on how Cooler tries to take his fight. The rocket's going to help out Razy trying to fight for the Mega, but how much LG is he prepared to take? That's the question. How does he chase it down? It's a nice little bit of rocket damage. Only one rocket left has to back up and get some of that ammo. The armor's going to be happily taken, too. Now Cooler going in for the kill. Look at the step up a little bit. That 2v1 though. Cooler still alive, but barely. Shotgun almost taking him out. Both players extremely weak. 225s for Razy, two for Cooler. Cooler is stuck in the boneyard now. Nice little fake on the jump pad. Still not out of the woods yet, and he can't make it to the Mega. Razy with the LG tickle takes the Mega, gets the frag down by two. Cooler was looking to do what he's pretty much done this entire map, which is go into Mega like right at the perfect time, forcing a fight from Razy, who feels like it's a good time to go in. And then, you know, that, that real trump card, that final play, getting the Mega at the perfect time. However, Razy taking a lot of damage there. Looks like the dual wield is still a possibility. And Cooler will pull the trigger when necessary. Mega's going to be the next objective. There's a wonderful rotation of the items, but the rocket's good. Looks like he's going to pop it, but he can't quite finish it. Razy. 
picking his fight just a little bit better there with those rockets now making it six to seven. Fresh off the spawn, cooler. He's gonna have an SSG and we've seen magic happen with that weapon for sure, but it's not really gonna be enough versus the amount uh, Razy's ready to fight. Some beautiful heavy machine gun there. Just to get some of that range damage established. Here he goes, full speed ahead. LG fight's gonna break out. Cooler running out of armor, something to definitely worry about. But he gets caught dropping the turret and the downtime required. Cooler punishing it massively. And here's the timing for, I mean, another time here throughout the course of Corrupted Keep. Cooler's so control heavy right now. Brazy just gets caught up for a split second throwing down that turret. Cooler punishes, now he's up two frags. A little bit of LG, the rocket coming in from Brazy is decent. Not enough to quite push him off the heavy. Cooler's gonna grab that. Absolutely ecstatic here as his stack is looking good. Razy's not too bad, but he needs to build up what he can as Cooler is going to be on the hunt. He grabs the Mega and now he's just extremely stacked. One shotgun for the turret LG on LG and Razy needs to stop the bleeding now. But he's consistently starving Razy of some of those small pickups at the same time. I really feel like Cooler is consistently having just a better stack. And then when you combine that with the dual wield, which at the moment is kind of really being used just to force Razy away from items. You know, it's used to kind of scare him away. In this case, he doesn't even need the dual wield and he's well aware of it. And now he's gonna use it fresh off the spawn. He gets the perfect cool. Razy taking a whole bunch of damage though. I think the play really was to pop the dual wield. Oh. Go into the spawn, should be a finish. And the turret actually did him a favor and gave him a mid-air without having to actually hit a mid-air. What is life? Oh, Cooler looking so strong, 10 to six. Razy in trouble now. A little more LG as he flies through the telly. 737 in this game. Cooler extremely stacked. Even when he gets chipped down, he just denies the items for Razy, but Razy gets in on that heavy. That's gonna be a good start. Needs a lot of damage. He's hanging by a thread, bleeding internally here as Cooler's gonna go down to the lower green. 225s for Razy, looking a little bit better. Stacks even, dual wield comes out. Mega goes to Razy. One last rocket into shotgun. 17 HP for Cooler as he escapes. Razy isn't that much healthier. The rocket landing. Finally, after two, he gets the frag. Still not that healthy, but he's gonna try and press on with the LG. Melting Cooler. Cooler hanging on by a thread here. Can he cut him off at the heavy turret? Goes down just in case. Is it gonna get the frag? Cooler's out of there. A Little bit of shotgun work. How did he stay alive? But he's been able to put himself into a pretty healthy position where he can at least pepper out some damage here. And he's running to take the Mega, but it doesn't matter the rocket as well. The fact that Cooler was able to evade as long as he did and then take heavy and then take meta. Are you kidding me right now? That was ridiculous. He's gonna pop the dual wield. Looking to pick up another frag. The heavy machine gun, the damage is absolutely insane. What a sequence from Cooler. A near unsurvivable position, and yet Cooler finds a way. Insanity 40. Unbelievable. The king is popping off right now. 12 to 7. LG on LG. Razy fighting for his life, but still can't do it. 21 HP, and again, there's the Mega after the fight and a 50 shard, and Cooler's just going to be stacked just like that with a minute left down six. Razy's keep might turn into Cooler's kingdom here as he is just fragging out right now. 14 to seven, decent rockets, but Cooler doesn't even need to fight. He's gonna make his way down to heavy, secure this and have more of a stack dual wield preemptively and he melts Razy. 15 to seven. What is going on here? This is a level of Cooler just grand finals looking to really correct everything that's happened here. Another frag, this map is 1,000% done, and then some, making it a 2-0 to the King, who's taken out Razy for a second time. I mean, a 3-0 versus Razy might be the last thing we expected, but it's looking kind of likely if he's able to keep this form. Razy has a mammoth of work oh. to do. The mid-air suicide. And I mean, this is just swag points at this point. It's time to reflect, and it's time to adjust accordingly, because now it's match point for Cooler. Complete domination. Complete domination. But it I mean, it opened it up more near the, the end. end. Yeah. yeah, it opened up more near the end, but once Cooler got going, it was brutal. And I didn't think that he was going to take keep like this at all. So many of those initial frags that happened were just thanks to Cooler just positioning himself so well near these these major items. Uh, and Razy Even the would, smaller ones. He yeah, would take sure. mini fights, deny the smaller ones on the way to the bigger ones, and Razy was just like, there's nothing left for me. Stop taking everything. But it is pure mechanical skill. It's what Cooler is famous for. It is just having this real efficiency uh, to just keep that rotation, to time everything perfectly. And you notice he wasn't just timing the, the Mega and the Heavy. 
He was timing the smaller items too. It's what kept him alive in some of these exchanges, and it's kind of what allowed him to continue going. It didn't work all the time. We can clearly see in the replay that sometimes it didn't work out, but it wasn't really very costly. You know, Cooler was able to, to respawn, refrag. You know, thanks to the BJ pick on this map too. You know, if you spawn near LG side, that was one of my favorite frags of the game. The turret blocking off and giving him a little bit more damage than maybe he should have done. That um, play. But just, I cannot believe it. And that one frag that we saw, it just came from the fact that Cooler somehow survived a, a crazy 1v1. Dashed in at max speed with BJ, take it away the heavy, swiftly going in for the Mega 2, because Razor, he just had the frag in his sight. That, that was his objective, and he didn't really focus on the rest. Cooler went in, swooped it up, and then just stole it away. And that was the ultimate turning point. There really was no coming back from that. And these frags at the end, they were just, you know, absolute victory lap frags where the map was done, and let's just get some swag, because he's going to run at me. He has no choice. Yeah. Wow. There are the map stats for Cooler as he takes the second map in the set. Dare I say, is the king going to have a clean sweep on the way to his crown? If you're looking to break this constant situation of being in grand finals or being near grand finals and not being quite able to close it out, not only winning this tournament, but doing it in a 3-0 fashion, it just breaks that wheel entirely. You know, it's a new era of cooler. You know, we, we've known cooler for so many years as being a legendary status player in multiple Quakes, but is this his time to reign supreme in Quake Champions? We will find out right now as we get into map number three. It's going to be Blood Covenant, Cooler versus Razy, the championship set. And map number three is underway. Razy on the Doom guy, Cooler on the Ranger. A little bit of rockets right from the start and a rail, but no damage for either player here. But this matchup of Ranger versus Doomslayer, you know, we, we've kind of seen Doomslayer to death on this map so many times. That's a really good rail. Narrowly misses, but I'm really eyeing up that stack difference. And I think Cooler is too. Because he has the chance to go down for a rail. My Razy stuck on 20 HP. Cooler wants it. Just missing out on his angle there. 32 HP. Razy's so weak right now. Wants a rail of his own. Finally secures it, but he's still extremely weak, extremely railable. Needs to stay out of sight here. It is this uncanny ability Cooler has displayed this weekend to just keep a player behind. He's so satisfied with you having no stack. He knows where everything is on the map. He knows what you're likely to retreat to and what your stack might be. No way Razy was chasing that. Has no choice but to concede. One minute in and Cooler has absolute dominance of just pure stack and control of this map so far. But Razy playing the patient man's game. He knows there's no rush and he knows that there's no need to rush into a fight. Unfortunately, constantly getting hit by rails and also unable to return them. And that's causing him a real problem so far. Not even having an angle to take a shot yet. As Razy paying a lot of respect, grabbing those two 50 armor shards, giving up the heavy in the last cycle. Didn't really have a choice, but immense amount of respect from Razy here. So he's got a lot of work to do in this set. That's a great rail. Cooler's gonna use the orb, a little bit of misdirection. And he is gonna take it last second. Rocket on rocket action coming out. That last rocket gonna clip the bridge. The rail not quite hitting its mark here. Razy's gonna drop down, grab the 50 again. Teleport so brave, it's almost surprising Cooler went for it. But look at the reward. Minimal damage dealt and the ability to go for heavy. They are gonna trade rails and as long as Cooler took the heavy, he's actually in a better oh. position. Here comes that machine gun. Sprayed out there too. Razy has to watch out. Watch out for those rail angles. Could have been disastrous, but he is alive temporarily. But he's head off by Cooler, makes the perfect read. And he's going to fall for that fate. Hook, line, and sinker. 1-0 for Cooler. Two minutes in, and I feel like this might be the potential to be one of our slower games in terms of frag difference, but I feel like it's going to be high octane when it comes to just general play, like the control of Cooler. I'm going to mention it again. You know, a, a Rafa once said that the way Cooler plays Quake, it feels like you're being choked. You know, this guy's a boa constrictor. And he's absolutely constricting the dreams of Razy right now as he's up 2-0. 1-0 on the map number three. Almost ironic that we're on this map, actually, on that note. A bit, yeah. yeah. That's a story. A bit of history for everybody. A story for another time. As the now fight breaking out towards Heavy Cooler, looking for an angle to escape. And Razy so far hasn't really been able to hit those rails that are unreturned yet. You know, you kind of know it's a game of momentum. The moment you trade off the rail, in some ways you know better than when you started, unless it's going to mean, you know, what are you crazy, crazy weak. In this case, where their stack's been kind of identical, when the rails connect each time, you're no real better off. Uh, it really comes down to having to hit one unreturned. Looks like Razy's able to get a little bit of an opening here. He needs to get a little bit more than that, though. The die roll. Doesn't teleport, and, and Razy, too much of a risk to stick around and dedicate for that 50-50 of teleport or not. He is going to push in hard, but wow. he can't secure the LG, looking too good and a little bit too much 
perhaps jumping from Razor. The LG is such an answer for Doomslayer when he's jumping in the air. It's very easy to catch him afloat. Oh my good oh, lord, with those rockets ah. into the rail around the corner. Cooler, two quick frags. And you're absolutely right. The double jump can be disastrous against an LG as Razor gets caught out in the doorway. And then another quick frag, 3-0, 340 in. That's a quick rail. Also has orb if he wants to close the gap. Shooting a rocket down by the telly here. A little bit of LG just out of range, luckily for Razy. Cooler making sure he doesn't do any shenanigans through the teleporter there. But now, thanks to the lead, we are in that kind of classic Cooler situation where all he's really doing now is just re-establishing control. And it is that control combined with hitting these fantastic shots to keep Razy behind where, thanks to a three-frag lead for Cooler, he's kind of content really just running this cycle. Uh, there's a really sizable delay in between the two items, so if Cooler plays his cards right, he can just rotate this indefinitely for this point. There is a rail that's unreturned though, so finally, Razy giving himself a little bit of breathing space where maybe he can be a little bit aggressive on this one. Goes for the teleport. Oh, I love the play. I love that play. Razy going a bit aggressive, trying to establish some threat here. But the Dire Orb just getting Ranger in and out. Takes one rail, but Ooh. denying it from Razy. Going in for the jump pad, actually. Quite risky business, but Razy wasn't prepared for it. I think he barely got knocked into it because of that weird fall, but yeah, Razy was already gone. He could have gotten another free rail out of it, but Cooler's going to be very satisfied that he didn't. Still maintaining this 3-0 lead. He's going to drop down, grab a 50 shard, make his way through the telly again, and this is all Cooler right now as we're just about at the halfway mark. Is Cooler going to sweep in the championship set? Here comes the LG. Razy has something to say about that, but so does the Mega and the Orb. The Shub Slayer comes out from the King 4-0. How many times are we going to see Cooler setting up shop on one of their major pickups and the fact that it spawns on him mid-fight. I mean, that's all calculated. There's nothing accidental about that. But the decision to go for the Dire Orb, detonating it at the perfect time, delivering massive damage to Razy and taking him out for a fourth time here in what could be the final map for Blood Covenant. Massive damage on the rocket, floats him in the oh. air, finishes the job with the shove, and it's now 5-0. to zero. Is Cooler going to take this one in dominant fashion as well? We'll oh, find out soon, 40. Four and a half minutes left, and we might have a brand new champion. Razy might be seeing orbs in his nightmare here as it's getting more and more dire, some might say. <laughs> 540 in, a little bit of LG from down below. Cooler looking so strong. Razy's got to be feeling the pressure right now. Already 0-2, and now he's in such a big hole on map number three. The rocket jump over the pillars, getting in position for this mega. Just wants to control these items. Lock Razy out. There's a great rail. And there's the mega pickup yet again. And for another time, it's shutting him out. He wasn't quite ready for that rail angle. And, and again, unfortunately, Razy missing some of these surprise shots. It's unlike him to be missing as regularly as he is. But there's that mix up. Razy actually does dedicate to that and makes the call that he's not going to teleport, but to no avail anyway. It's now going to be six to zero. Cooler continuing that lead and at this stage completely running away from it. If you're Razy, not only the fact that you're losing this map, but there's so much down on Razy's dumps at this point where he's already 2-0 down, right? And there's so much work to do. You need to now make a, a mammoth-sized comeback against Cooler, who is in better shape now than he's been in a very, very long time, and then take the next two maps. I dread to think this is far too much work for any mortal to pull off. I think you're right, catch up. But Razy is the God Slayer for a reason. Three minutes, six frags. It's nearly improbable, but if anyone can do it, it can be Razy. But he needs to start rather quickly here as Cooler is just playing extremely patient and silent. He's conceding Mega. He doesn't even care about that. He's going to be waiting right next to the Heavy, though. Any kind of sound signal, and out he goes just like that. Take the items, leave me alone, says Cooler. And we have reached that point where Cool is able to actually start positioning. That's a good read. Bit. Yeah, Razy making the call, but is it going to work out? A direct Ooh. rocket finally managed to secure something, but he's very, very weak. He has to kind of try and retreat, get as much health as he can. Uh, the Mega isn't going to spawn for a few seconds, so he's a little bit of in a weird position. He's going to be able to sit around and at least be able to seize it. But at this stage, that's just one frag. And Cooler you know, has to concede five more before Razy even manages to tie things up here. So that's a lot. That's you know, quite a tricky position. Cooler can play that patient man's game. He can kind of concede some of this control. He still stayed stage. there. Even after that fight, he's like, this is my stairwell. He's going to get caught up by Razy. The Dire Orb comes out with 8 HP. Razy gets the frag. So hurt trying to get some nails and rails off the spawn. No dice. Two minutes, four frags. All the pressure on Razy. This comeback's not impossible. However, Razy's going to have to make not one single mistake. Conceding one more frag and giving himself another frag's worth of work. 
is going to waste valuable seconds, but he's done a straight up fantastic job of securing these latest three. A minute and a half left to secure three more, under the assumption that Cooler will not tie things up. That's and at least get rail. one more. That's a wonderful rail. Cooler needs to get some armor. I fear that maybe getting the armor might be a bit too predictable, though. Razy, just in case he had Dire Orb ready to go. Sounds like he might even have heard it, in fact. But there's time being wasted. He's getting control, but he's going to have to find Cooler sooner or later and then get some of those spawn traps. And you can see Cooler, he's playing the patient man's game. Is he going to go back into the steps or is he going to just continue that cycle around the bottom of the map? And just looming on the one minute warning. He's going to get three frags in one minute. What? Stack is huge. Cooler's just going to run. There's one rail. Razy needs to convert to a frag. He's going to catch him out of the blood pool. The LG Cooler lying in wait, ready. The rockets, are they going to do it? No, that's one frag, two more. Can he get the spawn? And it looks like he does. He hits the rail, but he needs to convert this. This is so much pressure right now. He's going to... Wow, that's a but great how much jump. time is Cooler going to stall here on the staircase? Because now that's he's doing a fantastic it. rocket. Looking for the spawn again. Not going to be correct this time. Can Cooler survive for 30 seconds? If he can survive for 30 seconds, he will be the new champion of the Quake Pro League. But that's a lot of dodging to do in a short space of time against a very hungry Razy. He sees fantastic blood. rails. Razy on the chase, he needs this. 18 seconds, Cooler fighting for his crown right now. And Razy doubling back for the LG. Could that cost him 10 seconds? He needs to catch him out. This is everything. And I think Cooler might be able to do it. There's the rocket jump. He needs the frag. Five seconds and Cooler is nowhere to be found. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we have our champion. Cooler the King has done it in three. He's done it 100%. Give this man his belt. He's earned it through and through. And finally, after many years, Cooler breaks the curse and cracks into a major grand final victory. And he will be your second Quake Pro League grand champion. Oh my wow. days, that was ridiculous. That was absolutely fantastic play from the king. And the one thing I took away from that is apparently if you say you're not any good, you'll just destroy everybody. Maybe that's the key to everything. So humble is our king. And he finally has his crown. That was a dominating performance there as we take a look at the match stats. Again, Cooler takes it in three, even taking him on Razy's keep. I mean, fundamentally, this Grand Finals is an important piece of Quake history. This is the moment that Cooler has been able to finally break that cycle of not quite being able to just finish it, right? But he did more than that today. I've just been informed we have the stage host ready. Let's go to a Cooler interview, Interview the King. Thank you very much, guys. Congratulations, Cooler. You came second at QuakeCon. You've worked your way through the league. You took out the defending champion, and you won the grand final in a sweep. I'm guessing you're feeling a little bit different now than in, after the semi-final. Tell me about it. Mm, just shaking. That's it. How does it feel to know that you now have your name permanently on this belt? Mm, uh, I haven't won, I mean, um, since 2009 or 10, I haven't won a single time. Like, always second places or third places or even worse. So, it's the uh, first time I got first place in 10 years. I think the crowd tells you everything you need to know about that. How much of this is a boost in your confidence, knowing that not only have you won today, but moving forward, you can continue winning and get back into that rhythm. How excited are you for that? Mm, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You know, Quake, Quake, is, uh, uh, Quake is so beautiful, but at the same time, very strange game. So um, it's really hard to like, you know, like stay always uh, on top, but yeah. I'm, I'm always trying my best, and I think uh, I'm getting it. So, and I think uh, I deserve uh, this title because uh, it was a long uh, way. Well, congratulations. It's been a very, very long wait, like you said, and you 100% deserve every moment. And this one's yours. So's that belt, by the way. Congratulations, your champion, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>